in January 2019, a friend gave me testimony on Almighty God's work of the last days. I read Almighty God's words then, and they drew me in really deeply. For me, it was the advent of a new truth. I was overjoyed. Almighty God has explained things the religious world couldn't make sense of. Mysteries of the Bible, mysteries of the Incarnation, the root of man's corruption, and the path to casting of sin, being purified and being saved. No human could utter such words. I felt that this was the voice of God, that Almighty God is the Lord Jesus returned. So I happily accepted it and shared this incredible news with my family. My mom, my aunt, and some brothers and sisters accepted Almighty God. We gathered and read God's words every day, enjoying the truths expressed by Almighty God. We felt we were gaining a lot, much more than we had all those years in religion. Before long, the local pastor and deacons found out about my faith. One evening, a deacon showed up at my house unexpectedly and asked me, Why haven't you and your mom been attending services? I told him, I'm not going to church anymore because I found the true way. The Lord Jesus has returned. He is Almighty God. I've read lots of Almighty God's words, and I'm stunned. I've never read anything so novel. Almighty God has unraveled many biblical mysteries. I've discovered that Almighty God's words are the truth, and He is the returned Lord Jesus we've been waiting for. He heard me out, then responded doubtfully, The Lord Jesus returned? How could that be? I told him, Almighty God has begun the age of kingdom, and He is doing new work. The age of grace is in the past, and the Holy Spirit is no longer working in the religious churches. It's like when the Lord Jesus came to work. People left the temple and followed Him. Now, we need to keep up with God's new work to be saved by God in the last days. Seeing I was determined to believe in Almighty God, He said I'd be expelled and then just left. After that, the pastor and deacons went and harassed the family that had just accepted God's work of the last days. The pastor said to them, You've joined the Church of Almighty God and aren't attending our services. You've been fooled. The Lord hasn't come back. As a pastor, I know everything in the Bible. If Almighty God really were the Lord Jesus' return, I'd definitely know about it. She also said, If you insist on leaving the church, you have to say in front of everyone that you've turned your back on Jesus. Also, the church won't give you any help whatsoever. On Sunday, you'll have to come to the church to remove your names and announce it to the whole congregation. Otherwise, you'll be run out of the village. I was furious. Everyone has the right to freedom of belief, but they were using such vile tactics to keep people from investigating the true way. If they were benevolent servants, they should have a seeking heart, finding out what the Church of Almighty God is all about and looking into Almighty God's work. But faced with the Lord's return, they just blindly resisted and condemned it. How were the truth seekers? I went uh, to see the family that was harassed by the pastor the next day. The brothers said they believed Almighty God was the true God. So even if they were run out of the village, they'd keep believing in Him. After that, the pastor spread rumors and lies to keep people from investigating the true way. This showed me that believing in God and following Him isn't an easy thing. Just as the Lord Jesus said, Enter you win at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leads to life, 
and few there be that find it. Though the pastor hindered and suppressed us, we'd accepted the true way and found the way of eternal life. We were blessed. I thought of how the Lord Jesus was oppressed by the Jewish religion when He came and walked. Not many people followed Him then. Now, Almighty God has come to work and He is also oppressed by the religious world. Most people believe and listen to the clergy and won't accept the Lord's coming. That also clarified one fact for me. The true way has been oppressed since ancient times. Few accept the true way and follow God, while many worship humans and follow pastors in religion. This also made me stronger in my faith to follow Almighty God. Later on, the pastor reported my faith in Almighty God to church association. One evening, she came to my house, leading a bunch of people. She told me to go to the house of a deacon and clearly explain my faith in Almighty God to all the clergy and co-workers. They were so evil, opposing and condemning God's work of the last days. Thinking of this, I didn't have the courage to face them. But I knew if I didn't go meet with them, they just fabricate rumors. God had graced me, allowing me to hear His voice and learn some truths. Now that He needed me to bear witness to His work, I couldn't run away. So I prayed, Almighty God, please guide me and give me the words I need so that I have the faith to testify to your work. When I got to the deacon's house, I uh, sat down on a chair and saw over a dozen people seated around me, including five pastors with church association, as well as village clergy and some members of the congregation. Seeing so many people there made me feel timid again, because I didn't know what was coming next. I was praying to God in my heart non-stop to help me calm down. Gradually, I didn't feel so afraid because I knew Almighty God was with me. An older church association pastor asked me really sternly, why aren't you, your mother and your grandmother attending services? Do you know what the church is? Do you know that leaving it is betraying the Lord Jesus and He'll abandon you? I told her, the Lord Jesus told us for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the middle of them. What is a true church? To be a church, it doesn't matter how many members it has or where it is. No matter how many gather, as long as it has the Holy Spirit's work, God's presence, and the truth's sustenance, it's a church. Now, if we look at the church today, does it have the Holy Spirit's work? Does reading God's Word bring enlightenment? Are services enjoyable? And do they provide sustenance? Pastors just preach about the same old things, and it doesn't help people know the Lord at all. Believers can't get any life sustenance. They're weak and negative, greedy for wealth and other worldly things. Today's church is like the temple in the Lord Jesus' day. It has lost the Holy Spirit's work and can't be called a true church. Why do we want to believe in Almighty God now and stop attending services? It's because everything Almighty God has expressed is the truth. He has unveiled so many hidden mysteries of the Bible. Reading Almighty God's words has really opened my eyes brightened my heart and nurtured my spirit. This is the fruit of the Holy Spirit's work. Almighty God is the appearance of the true God, and the Church of Almighty God is the true Church. Today, many true believers from different denominations who long for the Lord's coming are reading Almighty God's words online through various means. 
they've become certain that this is God's voice. Why won't you look into it? Your pastors, preachers in the church, you should lead believers to welcome the Lord. That would be taking responsibility for their lives. When I was done, they were all silent. Later, the pastor asked me, You say the Lord Jesus has returned. How would you know? Then she opened up a Bible and, pointing to a verse, told me, The Bible says, But of that day and hour knows no man, not the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but my Father only. This says that no one will know when the Lord comes. So how would you know? I said, If no one at all knew that He had come, then how would we welcome Him? The Bible saying, But of that day and hour knows no man, means that no one knows the time of His coming. But He will speak after He comes. He will carry out His work. When we hear the Lord's voice and see the truths He has expressed, won't we know that He is returned? Just as the Lord Jesus said, And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go you out to meet him. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. So, the key to welcoming the Lord is to listen for His voice. If we hear someone calling that the bridegroom has come, that is, testifying that the Lord has returned, we should go out to meet Him and humbly listen for the Lord's voice. Only that kind of person is a wise virgin who can welcome the Lord and feast with Him. According to your thinking, no one will know even after the Lord has come then how can all these Bible verses be explained and how will they be fulfilled? I also gave them an example. I said, think of when the Lord Jesus came to work. At first, no one recognized Him as God. When He started working and speaking, the Holy Spirit testified, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. After that, he started showing signs and wonders, healing the sick, preaching the way of repentance, and forgiving people's sins. He began the work of redemption from the age of grace. It was only then that people recognized the Lord Jesus as mankind's Redeemer, as God Himself. Isn't our faith in the Lord based solely on His work and words? The great disasters have already begun. All the prophecies of the Lord's coming have been fulfilled. He has returned and is working. He is expressing the truths needed to purify and save mankind. And He is doing the work of judgment, beginning with God's house. He has made a group of overcomers. These are facts that no one can deny. We can passively await our doom assessing God's work based on our notions. We'll miss our chance to welcome the Lord that way. Hearing this, a young pastor from Church Association became angry and asked me, This Almighty God, where is He? Have you seen Him? If not, how can you be sure that He is the return of the Lord Jesus? In response, I asked her a question. You believe in the Lord Jesus. Have you seen Him? None of us have seen the Lord, so why would we believe in Him? None of them responded. Then I said, Back when the Lord Jesus was working in the flesh, hadn't many people seen Him? The chief priests, scribes, and Pharisees had seen the Lord's face. But did they recognize Him as the Lord? Did they follow Him? Not only did they not follow Him, 
but they condemned and rejected him, ultimately having the Lord Jesus nailed to the cross. What does that tell us? Even if you see the Lord's face, if you don't understand him and can't recognize his voice, you'll still oppose him and be condemned by him. If you had been born in that age and you had seen the Lord Jesus and heard his sermons, would you have recognized him as Christ? It's really hard to say. When I was done, the pastor retorted, You say Almighty God is the Lord Jesus returned. On what basis? I replied, The Lord Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. To determine whether Almighty God is the manifestation of God, the key is to see if what He speaks is the truth. I'll read Almighty God's words for you, and you can see if this is God's voice. Then you'll know if Almighty God is the Lord Jesus returned. Then I read a couple passages of Almighty God's words on my phone to them. Almighty God says, Throughout the universe, I am doing my work. And in the east, thunderous crashes issue forth endlessly, shaking all nations and denominations. It is my voice that has led all men into the present. I cause all men to be conquered by my voice, to fall into this stream and submit before me. For I have long since reclaimed my glory from all the earth and issued it forth anew in the east. Who does not long to see my glory? Who does not anxiously await my return? Who does not thirst for my reappearance? Who does not pine for my loveliness? Who would not come to the light? Who would not look upon the richness of Canaan? Who does not long for the return of the Redeemer? Who does not adore him who is great in power? My voice shall spread throughout the earth. I will face my chosen people and speak more words to them. Like the mighty thunders that shake the mountains and rivers, I speak my words to the whole universe and to mankind. Hence, the words in my mouth have become man's treasure, and all men cherish my words. The lightning flashes from the east all the way to the west. My words are such that man is loath to give them up and at the same time finds them unfathomable, but rejoices in them all the more. All men are glad and joyful, celebrating my coming, as if an infant had just been born. By means of my voice, I shall bring all men before me. Thenceforth, I shall formally enter into the race of men so that they will come to worship me. With the glory that I radiate and the words in my mouth, I shall make it such that all men come before me and see that the lightning flashes from the east and that I have also descended unto the Mount of Olives of the east they will see that I have already long been on earth, no longer as the son of the Jews, but as the lightning of the east. For I have long since been resurrected and have departed from mankind's midst and then reappeared with glory among men. I am he who was worshipped countless ages before now, and I am also the infant forsaken by the Israelites countless ages before now. Moreover, 
I am the all-glorious, almighty God of the present age. Let all come before my throne and see my glorious countenance, hear my voice, and look upon my deeds. This is the entirety of my will. It is the end and the climax of my plan, as well as the purpose of my management to have every nation worship me, every tongue acknowledge me, every man repose his faith in me, and every people be subject unto me. Christ of the last days brings life and brings the enduring and everlasting way of truth. This truth is the path by which man gains life, and it is the only path by which man shall know God and be approved by God. If you do not seek the way of life provided by Christ of the last days, then you shall never gain the approval of Jesus and shall never be qualified to enter the gate of the kingdom of heaven. For you are both a puppet and prisoner of history. Those who are controlled by regulations, by letters, and shackled by history will never be able to gain life nor gain the perpetual way of life. This is because all they have is turbid water, which has been clung to for thousands of years, instead of the water of life that flows from the throne. Those who are not supplied with the water of life will forever remain corpses, playthings of Satan and sons of hell. How then can they behold God? If you only try to hold on to the past, only try to keep things as they are by standing still, and do not try to change the status quo and discard history, then will you not always be against God? The steps of God's work are vast and mighty, like surging waves and rolling thunders. Yet you sit passively, awaiting destruction, clinging to your folly and doing nothing. In this way, how can you be considered someone who follows the footsteps of the Lamb. After hearing God's words, they were all whispering to each other, looking astounded. Before long, that older pastor pointed at me and said, I believe that what you've just read can't possibly be God's words. God's words are merciful, but this is true stern. These are not God's words. I said, you think God is merciful and that He wouldn't use stern words to expose and curse people. Are you certain this opinion matches the facts? The Lord Jesus said many things rebuking people. Have you really forgotten? He condemned the Pharisees, saying, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer you them that are entering to go in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you compass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. There is plenty more like this. This proves that God's disposition not only contains mercy and love, but also majesty and wrath. We can measure God's work and words according to our own notions and imaginings. That would be committing the error 
of judging and delimiting God. I continued, The Bible also prophesies God's judgment work in the last days. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. God expresses truths and judges mankind in the last days, sorting all according to their kind, thoroughly separating the sheep from the goats, the wheat from tares, and good servants from evil ones. If God came to work in the last days and remained full of mercy and love, without any righteous judgment and damnation, then when could the age come to a close? Then I read them another passage of Almighty God's words. Almighty God says, Supposing that in revealing the outcome of man during the last days, God were still to bestow upon man infinite compassion and love, and continue to be loving toward him, not subjecting man to righteous judgment, but rather showing him tolerance, patience, and forgiveness, and pardoning man no matter how grave his sins, without any jot of righteous judgment. When then would all of God's management ever be brought to a close? When would a disposition such as this be able to lead people into mankind's appropriate destination? Take, for example, a judge who is always loving, a judge with a kindly face and a gentle heart. He loves people irrespective of the crimes they may have committed. And he is loving too and forbearing with them, whoever they may be. In that case, when will he ever be able to reach a just verdict? During the last days, only righteous judgment can separate man according to their kind and bring man into a new realm. In this way, the entire age is brought to an end through God's righteous disposition of judgment and chastisement. After hearing that, they didn't have any comebacks. A moment later, the older pastor pointed her finger at me and said in a reprimanding tone, Do you know where the Church of Almighty God is from? It's from China, and it's been banned by the Chinese government. The country's government doesn't acknowledge it as the true way. So why do you believe in it? I responded by asking, Who is the Chinese government? Are they followers of God? Or is it an atheistic, satanic regime? As a pastor, how can you believe a satanic regime? That's foolish. By your logic, Anything a government doesn't approve of can't be the true way. Does that line up with reality? When the Lord Jesus came and worked, did He not suffer the government's condemnation and oppression? How did He come to be crucified? Wasn't it the Pharisees aligning with the Roman government that got the Lord Jesus nailed to the cross? According to your logic, Anything oppressed and banned by a government can't be the true way. So shouldn't you deny and condemn the Lord Jesus' work? Isn't that asinine? The Bible says, And the whole world lies in wickedness. The entire world lies in Satan's hands. The authorities are corrupt humans too. Do they know God? To this day, we haven't seen any national leaders make the effort to investigate Almighty God's work or lead the people to worship Him. What does that show us? Whether it's a religious country or an atheistic one, none of the rulers are people who know God. How could they possibly tell the true way from false ways? There is no way they could. Their assessments of things are entirely based on satanic logic and contain no truth. When I had said my piece, they were all speechless. After quite a while, that older pastor pointed at me and said, incensed, If you leave the church and someone in your family gets sick, the clergy won't pray for them. 
they won't be healed. And when they die, their soul won't get into heaven. Then what will you do? I knew in my heart that she was trying to use those old village customs to control me. We used to really adulate the pastors and we relied on them to pray for us. The pastors were held in high regard by believers and we relied on them for everything. But since believing in Almighty God, I've learned that clergy can't represent God and they can't determine whether people get into heaven after they die. So I said to them, when something happens in my family in the future, we won't need your prayers. That younger pastor said, what will you do if no one helps you conduct funerals? I responded decisively, if someone in my family dies, we'll bury their body. There's no need to carry out any funeral rites. The Bible says, and another of his disciples said to him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, follow me and let the dead bury their dead. Between a family member's death and the Lord's commands, which is most important? The Lord has clearly instructed us to follow Him and honor Him as great. That's most important. Why do you stay wrapped up in meaningless rituals instead of seeking the truth and welcoming the Lord's return? People's outcomes and destinations are in God's hands. No human can decide these. And people can't get into heaven just from a pastor's prayers. That's ridiculous. I continued, Now the Lord has returned and expressed many truths. He has shown us the path to cast up sin so we can be purified and saved. If we don't follow Almighty God or accept the judgment and purification of His words, but live within meaningless religious rites, is that really enough to become purified? After I said that, they were at a loss for words to rebut me. Then another pastor smiled and said to me, Zemong, you're a man of caliber, a thinking man. The church values you. If you keep working in the church and get more people to join, the church will become stronger. Together, we can do God's work. That would be wonderful. I could tell they were being really insincere. All they valued was being in charge of more people because that way they'd get more offerings. They weren't longing for God's appearance. I said to them, welcoming the Lord is more important than anything. No matter what you say, I will never stop following Almighty God. Your church pastors, why don't you lead believers in welcoming the Lord's coming instead of resisting and condemning it? Aren't you afraid of going against God and being punished by Him? Then the younger pastor cut me off furiously and said, Everything we're doing is to protect our flocks. Since you're set on believing in Almighty God, the church will expel you, and you will not be permitted to come steal our ship. I got even angrier when I heard her say that. The Lord has returned and He wants to find His sheep. These church leaders should take the initiative to lead believers to investigate the true way, bringing God's sheep before Him. A faithful servant would do this. But that's not what they're doing. To protect their status and their living, they mislead and deceive believers under the guise of protecting the flock, getting people to go along with them opposing and condemning God's work. They are so hypocritical, through and through evil servants. It reminded me of a quote from Almighty God. Today, many people have committed a similar error. They proclaim with all their might the imminent appearance of God. 
yet at the same time condemn his appearance. Their impossible once more confines the appearance of God within the limits of their imagination. And so, I have seen many people break into wild and raucous laughter after coming upon the words of God. But is this laughter any different from the condemnation and blasphemy of the Jews? You are not reverent in the presence of the truth. Still less do you possess an attitude of yearning. All you do is study indiscriminately and wage with blithe unconcern. What can you gain from studying and waiting like this? Do you think you will receive personal guidance from God? If you cannot discern God's utterances, in what way are you qualified to witness the appearance of God? Almighty God's words are perfectly clear. These pastors don't treat the truth or God's work with the slightest bit of reverence. They are the antichrists, the evil servants exposed by God in the last days. They have no right to witness God's appearance. Ultimately, once they saw how unshakable my faith in Almighty God was, they couldn't help but let me leave. Later, they spread notions and rumors among believers. They didn't allow them to have contact with believers of Almighty God and misled them into opposing Him. They warned each and every person they'd be kicked out of the church if they followed Almighty God. Lots of people didn't dare investigate Almighty God's work because of their misleading and obstruction. Seeing the clergy so intent on going against God's work made me really angry, and I wanted to reason with them. But I knew my efforts would be in vain. I prayed to God, asking Him to enlighten me so I would know what to do. A sister later fellowshiped with me. Back then, the Pharisees insisted that the Lord Jesus come down from the cross to prove He was the Messiah. But He didn't do that. Even though He didn't prove it for them to see, didn't His gospel spread across the whole world? Everything is ruled and arranged by God. He uses the actions of these antichrists so we can tell good from evil. Through them, we can see how Satan misleads people and fights against God. We can see Satan's evil and shamelessness, despise it, and reject those religious clergy. That's God's wisdom. Hearing her fellowship brightened my heart, and I wasn't held back by the clergy anymore. Since the pastors kept their churches strictly cut off, we went to share the gospel in other places first. Before long, a lot of people had investigated and accepted Almighty God's work of the last days. I read a couple more passages of Almighty God's words of the dead. They gave me more clarity on the pastor's essence of resisting God. Almighty God says, Do you wish to know the root of why the Pharisees opposed Jesus? Do you wish to know the essence of the Pharisees? They were full of fantasies about the Messiah. What is more, they believed only that the Messiah would come, yet did not pursue the truth of life. And so, even today, they still await the Messiah, for they have no knowledge of the way of life and do not know what the way of truth is. How, say you, could such foolish, stubborn, and ignorant people gain God's blessing? How could they behold the Messiah? They opposed Jesus because they did not know the direction of the Holy Spirit's work, because they did not know the way of truth spoken by Jesus. And furthermore, 
because they did not understand the Messiah. And since they had never seen the Messiah and had never been in the company of the Messiah, they made the mistake of clinging to the mere name of the Messiah while opposing the essence of the Messiah by any means possible. These Pharisees, in essence, were stubborn, arrogant, and did not obey the truth. The principle of their belief in God was, no matter how profound your preaching, no matter how high your authority, you are not Christ unless you are called the Messiah. Is this belief not preposterous and ridiculous? There are those who read the Bible in grand churches and recite it all day long. Yet not one among them understands the purpose of God's work. Not one among them is able to know God. Still less can anyone among them accord with God's will. They are all worthless, vile people, each standing on high to lecture God. They willfully oppose God even as they carry his banner. Claiming faith in God, still they eat the flesh and drink the blood of man. All such people are devils that devour the soul of man, head demons that deliberately get in the way of those trying to step onto the right path, and stumbling blocks impeding those who seek God. They may appear of sound constitution, but how are their followers to know that they are none other than antichrists who lead people to stand against God? How are their followers to know that they are living devils dedicated to the devouring of human souls? I used to really look up to the pastors. They had worked for the Lord for many years and knew the Bible well. They seemed really loving toward others. In their sermons, they told believers to be watchful and patiently wait for the Lord's coming. So I thought they were true believers awaiting the Lord's coming. But what the revelations of Almighty God's words and the facts showed obliterated that idea of mine. They appeared devout. But when they heard someone was spreading news of the Lord's coming, their anti-God, God-hating faces came to light. When I gave them testimony on Almighty God's work, they were incredibly arrogant and stubbornly clung to the literal words of the Bible. No matter how authoritative and powerful Almighty God's words were, they wouldn't accept them, but kept resisting and condemning them. They even resorted to threats, preventing believers from looking into Almighty God's work. They schemed to stop people from investigating the true way for the sake of their own status and living. They were afraid if everyone believed in Almighty God, no one would give them offerings and they'd lose their positions. Everything they did was just like what the Pharisees did against the Lord Jesus. 2,000 years ago, which was condemned and cursed by God. The Lord Jesus condemned the Pharisees, saying, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer you them that are entering to go in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees! Hypocrites, for you compass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. In that face-to-face -face debate with them, it was entirely Almighty God giving me strength. And the results were thanks to what little truth I'd learned reading Almighty God's words.
It was a really special experience in my life. If I didn't believe in Almighty God and hadn't read His words, I'd be just like the other believers, believing in God but worshipping and following men. There's no way I'd have discernment over those hypocritical Pharisees, those antichrists. I'd have ended up on the wrong path because I worshipped the clergy and would have been cast out by God. Thank Almighty God.